Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to speak to you guys about, there's so many products available nowadays, so many different things, and I'm not just talking brands, I'm talking about actual new kind of products that have come to light over the past like three or four years. And today I wanted to speak to you about ones that are kind of unnecessary, like products that we don't actually need, and that didn't really actually need to be invented in the first place. <laughs> but I feel like we kind of live in this social media thing at the moment where you see a product and I do the same thing. You see a product and you're like, oh my God, I really need to put that into my makeup routine. I didn't know that this was a thing, you know? So today I wanna to take you through a few things that I think are really unnecessary and you don't really need to consider adding to your makeup routine or maybe things that you can kind of let go of. Because makeup is, makeup is, it's a lot nowadays. Before we get into that, if you are new to my channel, welcome. If you are um, not, then also, also welcome. My name is Robert, I'm a professional makeup artist and it's my goal here on YouTube to help you become a pro yourself or just really, really good at makeup. So if that sounds great, good to you, <laughs> then go ahead and consider subscribing. Let's get straight into it. Let's talk about baking powder. So, so I never in the whole, my whole makeup career, have I ever, ever used the, you know, the process of baking. Never in my life until I filmed a video a few months back where I tried it for the very first time. I bought a baking powder that was meant for baking, for the face, for makeup. And well, the experience didn't go so well. I've never considered it something, um, that I've had to do. In, in a makeup routine, if I'm highlighting under the eyes, I'll use um, a liquid, not a, not a shimmery highlighter, but like almost like a lighter concealer. I've never once had to carve out a face or do all this shit on, on, on someone's face. So here's why I think it's not necessary for your everyday makeup routine. A lot of people do it to set concealer under the eyes to stop those creases from happening. Here's the deal. So I can understand that mattifying the top lid to stop creases from happening. But when it comes to underneath here, it's creasing here for a different reason as to why it's creasing up here. <laughs> your top lid creases because it's greasy. Your bottom lid creases because it's dry. So putting a powder on top of a product to suck out any moisture and set it, I mean, it will set it, but it will completely dry out under the eye. Every person who I've spoken to about under their eyes, why it's still creasing, why does it look so dry, they set their under eyes with powder or they bake. Under here does not produce moisture, it does not produce any oils, anything like that. So concealers, for example, will have like an oil or something in them to help hydrate and sit for, um, you know, a long period of time. If you're then going on top and drying it out, I mean, if you're like 12, then you have no wrinkles under your eyes, but if you're a little bit older, and the skin under your eyes is starting to get a little bit creepier, you're gonna notice that baking is gonna give you a really horrible, creepy finish. Super unnecessary, it looks terrible in pictures, Anyway, here's the alternative. If you want your concealer to last under your eyes for a longer time, use a long wearing concealer. I mean, it's literally that simple. If you want it to be lighter, use a concealer and then use a lighter concealer on top. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, powdery and flat and horrible. I feel like this is gonna be a controversial one, but for me, setting spray is not exactly needed. People like swear by setting spray. People swear by, you know, um, Urban Decay All Nighter setting spray, the Morphe setting spray, MAC Fix Plus. People swear by these products. And I use setting sprays every single day. And there is a way I use them that actually works for me. But when I finish doing um, makeup, I like to use a setting spray because it almost refreshes the skin. It's not, in my mind, it's not gonna be um, a case of longevity or making the makeup last longer. It's just gonna make um, everything look like more tied together, if that makes sense. Especially if I've used powder, then I kind of drench your face in a setting spray and then fan it dries just so it looks like skin again. So here's my thinking with setting spray. I've tried the Urban Decay All Night a Setting Spray. Let me just, I, okay. I don't get why everyone loves it so much. I get why people may like it, but I don't get why they love it so much. Because I used it and it was fine, but it worked like any other setting spray. So I see a difference when it comes to like refreshing makeup, if that makes sense. When it comes to the longevity of makeup, I think this is where we're getting it wrong when it comes to setting products. So pretend this bag is our skin, our very thick skin. And so we're putting on our makeup and then we put on our setting spray on top. So our setting, setting spray is sitting here. So what's actually breaking down our makeup from this side 
it's going to be water, you know, rain, fire, um, uh, wind. <laughs> but what's breaking down our makeup from this side, which is more than likely what is breaking down our makeup every single day, is our own natural oils. So what do we have here to block that? What are we using? We need something like this here. So that's when we use like primers and things like that. I personally use the MAC Fix Plus Matte Spray. Um, you can use your Urban Decay All Night as setting spray. After your skincare, after your primer, spray and then makeup. If that's what we want, if that's what we want, our, if we want our makeup to last a long time, then we need to block the source that is ruining our makeup and that is the oil from our skin. So although I don't think setting spray is completely unnecessary, I think the way we use it and when we use it and maybe the product can be altered um, in a certain way. Another product that I've seen which is very gimmicky and I don't really like is, and it's more kind of an all-rounder, are certain brushes. Those kind of like spoon-like brushes in particular and um, those kind of what are called like contouring or sculpting brushes. Now here's the reason these aren't necessary in comparison to maybe your normal blushes and your beauty blenders. Huh. beauty blenders. So I have used these like spoon brushes before and that contour one. Here's the deal with brushes. The, the more tinier they are, let me, okay, I know they're two completely different brushes, but here's the deal with brushes. The smaller and denser they are, the closer to like the actual metal brush part they are, the thicker and the more denser your product is going to be applied. If it's longer and less dense, you're gonna get a really light kind of um, coverage. So when a brush like these spoon brushes or whatever they're called, or these contour brushes are so close and tightly packed with hairs, when they're so close to the skin, you're gonna get this really unnatural, really, really harsh, dense colour. And I find as well with things like contouring and things like applying powder, it actually kind of ruins the texture of your makeup underneath. And of course we don't want a harsh line, which most of these brushes do. Now I think they're great for things like maybe nose contouring, maybe if you are a body painter and you wanted more details, or if you really wanted a full coverage foundation, I would use that. But in terms of things like blusher, powder, I even see people trying to do eyeshadow with it. I really don't like them. I think they're really unnecessary. Necessary. So last but not least, I wanted to talk to you guys about colour corrector. So the one product that made me want to talk about this in this video is Nikita Dragon's um, eggs, <laughs> whatever they were. And she bought out a an egg and it had two, uh, two like ashy powders and a colour corrector. And here's what I found kind of funny about the colour corrector, is it was so dark, it was such a dark ready orange. Um, not everyone needs to use that, but under the eyes for um, maybe some patches on the skin, that kind of deep red on a fairer skin tone, or even slightly darker than my skin tone, and then some. You're gonna spend more time covering it up uh, than you need to. So a colour that's so intensely dark, peach or orange does work, but then you'll find you need to then colour correct the orange tone, and then you'll need to colour correct the tone that you've just corrected to you colour correct the orange tone to make it even to your skin tone. So there's a lot of colour correction going on. Colour correctors in general, I think we went through this phase, do you remember that clown colour correcting or whatever it was? We went through this fad of being like, oh my god, what colour colour correct can I use? And we have these green, purple, orange, yellow, uh, uh, red, mm. They are so unnecessary. Here's the thing, yellow also cancels out green. No, it doesn't. Yellow also cancels out red. So if you have redness in your skin, I have um, sun damage on my cheeks that I cover all the time. Today I haven't used a green colour corrector, sometimes I do. Today I haven't because I'm using a yellow tone foundation, which naturally colour corrects red. And for under the eyes, if you're quite dark, just go for a deeper pink tone concealer and it will level itself out. These colour correctors are so gimmicky and so over the top, and yes, it's great to use them if you really want a flawless, um, all over, like, one tone finish, but to use them all the time and to use them every day adds a really long step to your makeup routine, a really long, unnecessary step to your makeup routine. It's super unnecessary, and a lot of the time, you don't even need it. Listen, your under eyes are not as dark as you think they are, trust me. They'll be very easy to correct. So that's those few products that I think you can maybe lose out of your makeup routine, or not even consider buying in the first place. If there was anything there where you were like, Robert, what the hell are you talking about? I cannot live with my setting spray. I love baking because, you know, I like 
powder. Anything like that, let me know below. Let's talk about it. Let's have a discussion. I love talking to you guys about um, your makeup and like new products and things like that. If there's any products that you've bought that you thought, why did I do this? Why have I just made my life harder? Again, let me know below. Any products you regret buying, let me know. Thank you so much again, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you very soon. Bye.